Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be talking about axioms and whether or not they're needed in mathematics. So let's begin. Now, why are axioms not needed in math? Why are axioms not needed in math? Well, let's start with this pithy summary here. Mainstream academics assert paradoxically that every concept is generated by the human brain, while simultaneously claiming that an axiom is self-evident. The inherent irony in the stance is evident to me, and I invite your consideration. Oh, and by that I don't mean you must clutter up my comment section with your drivel. If we accept that every concept originates from the human brain, then it logically follows that an axiom also emerges from a cognitive process. Consequently, it cannot be inherently self-evident, as its realization necessitates a functioning brain. So, in essence, the notion of an axiom is rendered untenable. You can't even defend the word. And by the way, in a very old uh, purported conversation between Archimedes, Proclus, and also another Greek mathematician, I don't remember, it was unanimously agreed that, uh, that the requirements are not axioms and that they had to be proved or derived systematically from nothing in a valid way, of course. So for something to be deemed an axiom, it must exist independently of any particular brain and its truth must be beyond questioning or its correctness or its, or rather its well-formedness. So, in a conversation with a like-minded individual X, he said, or she said, a definition is really about bounding something, which implies that it's independent from your mind. And my response is the process of binding the definition is to form a generic conduit so as to exclude irrelevant information, to keep the definition directed and to avoid contradictions. And then X says, people always want the best of both worlds. They attempt to make everything overly general, only to get the worst of everything. In my opinion, one should think only in terms of a possible difference between a definition and an action. Okay. In, so, so an action is usually stated as a definition. If, for example, you say, if X and Y have the same elements, then X equals to Y. That is a definition of equality between sets. Okay. So an axiom is a definition that is usually a description of the properties and or attributes of a concept or object that is considered to be well-formed or correct. Therefore, an axiom is always a definition. Okay? Always. So definitions and axioms are definitions, with the exception that axioms are considered to be well-formed or correct. So if you produce a definition that is garbage, well, then it obviously can't be an axiom, right? Because axioms have that extra little attribute which says the definition needs to be well-formed. But nothing about proof, by the way, okay? So why does one even have to prove that two objects are the same or equal when it is stated to that effect? Look. If X and Y have the same elements, is given you morons. And I'm speaking to set theorists, topologists, and math professors. If X and Y have the same elements, there is nothing to prove. The definition states that the two objects, X and Y, have, have the same elements. This, this requirement is a condition 
that is part of the definition. <clears throat> Look, you imbeciles, if X and Y, then, okay, it's given to have the same elements. There is nothing to prove. So syphilitic-brained mainstream math professors have this ghost called proof hanging over every one of their sewer thoughts because mainstream mathematics is a cult whose perspectives are so extreme that even the most simple definitions require proof. If you write x is equal to x, there is nothing to prove there, you morons. x is the same as x, okay? And if you say x and y have the same elements, then you're using that as a definition for why the two objects are the same. Again, nothing to prove. Now, this all makes, makes me think of the famous quote, I think, therefore I am, cogito ergo sum. So mainstream professors tend to have this approach, I think, therefore it is. <laughs> well, the only problem is when it comes out of their brains, it's usually garbage. So it's false, in other words. It's ill-formed, it's false, it's nonsense because they're a bunch of morons. Okay, now let's see if we can summarize. Definitions provide meanings or properties of concepts, while axioms are well-formed definitions that require no proof. Okay, they're well-formed. So the key points are that definitions describe the meaning or properties of concepts without needing, notice this, without needing to be correct or incorrect. Hence, no proof is required. Okay. And again, definitions, uh, axioms are definitions known to be well-formed and used as foundational truths. So if they're well-formed, again, no proof is required. Okay. That is really the crux and the summary of the entire matter. So axioms, finally, are not needed in mathematics. They're basically a bunch of crap that was invented by my intellectual inferiors of the past few hundred years. Okay, so to summarize again, mainstream academics assert paradoxically that every concept is gener generated by the human brain while simultaneously claiming that an axiom is self-evident. The whole concept of axiom is untenable. If you're not a rare subscriber, become one. Follow me on academia.edu. Tell your friends about this. Spread the news. Click like. Till next time, I'm John Gabriel, and this is New Calculus Channel. Goodbye.